Hi, this is Catherine Lake Klein, and this is The Secret Art of Business, and today I am super excited to have Johanna Terrell. And may I call you Yogi, because I think all, I think all of your friends get to. <laughs> yes, yes, of course you can, yes. Sure. Right. We kind of go way back, you know, so... Um, I, I we could we I I'd like to treat this kind of informally and not too you know super super um uptight. So anyway, um you are the CEO of Warhol and Wall Street and you also are doing um a Clum the Columbus Fashion Ish Initiative, which I want to definitely talk about that too. But first of all, let's start with Warhol and Wall Street. How did you get that name and what do you do over there? <laughs> yeah, so um you know, Warhol and Wall Street, we are a uh, full service branding and strategy consultancy. So, um, you know, we started the company about 12 years ago and it really started off because me and my business partner both knew a lot of creatives, but we also mm -hmm. really, we, we really jammed out together on strategy. So when I met my business partner, Chris Jones, uh, we met through doing events and we would often get into these conversations around, you know, business and strategy and how the, the industry was changing. And so because we started to kind of drive in that direction, but we also had this like network of like really talented photographers and videographers and artists and fashion designers that we knew, we started to think about it. It was like, man, what if we could find a way to find opportunities for creatives, uh, but also do like really dope projects that we were seeing, starting to see in the marketplace that were done from smaller agencies. And so we're like, man, let's just, let's do that. And so uh, we started the agency, like I said, about 12 years ago. We really focus on things that connect people mm -hmm. and use the arts to do that. And so the name is really tied really well into our vision for the company. So it took me, like, I'll tell you, like, how we came up with it. It took me, like, three months, first of all, to come up with this name. It's and like the hard I, part of business. <laughs> it is, you know, I mean, if it was a, if it was a client, I could do it in like five minutes. People right, me, right. Like, I need someone like, oh, call it that. And they're like, wow, how'd you do that? But then with <laughs> your own baby, it's like, all right. So I remember like, you know, trying to think about what we represented. We represented creatives and then we represented like strategy. And I was, we kept like mulling names around about how do we show where it kind of converges at. And I remember one day I was driving and it just hit me and I was like, Man, Warhol on Wall Street, like, and then it's, I kept it kept resonating. I called my friend. I was like, "Bro, what do you think about Warhol on Wall Street?" And he's like, "I don't like it." I'm like, "Forget <laughs> you." Because <laughs> it, 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 it rang, it, it rang for me, and so uh, basically the name, the name, you know, Andy Warhol really represented yeah. kind of the bridge between pop culture and art, right? Like, mm -hmm. he was culture, right? He was really into the scene. And so the Campbell soup can, the Marilyn Monroe, all those things kind of really represent pop culture and then he turned that into art. And so like, we, we believe in that, you know, we believe like, you know, there's a creative class that influences culture, culture influences commerce. And so we really wanted to embody that. So when people thought about us, they understand pop culture and art. And then Wall Street really is just, it's straight up bottom line, it's economic impact. Like, we know at the end of the day, we still have to do a job for our clients. So it's not like, you know, we want to just do cool stuff and you pay us to do cool stuff for you. It's like, no, we want this cool, you know, experience or strategy, whatever it is, to actually benefit you, right? And that's what you're paying us for. You're not paying us to do what we want to do. We have to make sure that we are also keeping that in mind on what you do. And so it's really that intersection between creativity and strategy, you know, business and the arts. Whatever contract we do, we try to make sure that we have like arts at the table. So we kind of build a, a, a custom team around clients and projects to where if we can bring in a poet, a painter, a, a, a dancer, a visual artist, you know, muralist, we always try to incorporate that stuff because we know art really does influence culture. I, I love it. And actually, I'm secretly jealous of that name. It's so cool. <laughs> We just did like um, we just named our company after we got to make it obvious for people. <laughs> so yeah. we're probably yeah. creative. It's artists, and you know, it's creative people. Um, yeah. Anyway, all right. So 
uh, little Yogi did not just show up where you are today. So I want to know, what did you do as a kid that started to um, stimulate your ideas as far as you, uh, getting into marketing or maybe the direction that you are today? Or maybe it's nothing, you know, just what were, what were some of the things that you just did as a kid that just kind of got your creativity charged up a little bit? Um, so, all right, this, uh, I, a few people know the story, but like when I was a kid, I was always in the entertainment. I used to be in a dance group, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in middle school, I got into this dance group. It was called YMK. Uh, it, was, it was still for young men with knowledge. It was like, like it was back in the day, when like when like BBD was like really popular. You know what I mean? And like uh, New Edition turning to BBD, and like all of these like yeah. hip hop groups were coming out, and you know hip hop dancers and stuff. And so we had this little like hip hop dance group, and that was my first taste of like the entertainment scene. So I used to go on tour with like bands and we'd be the opening act and we used to win these like local talent shows oh yeah, yeah. my god <laughs> and I'm, I'm too big now i don't like i don't have the moves anymore you know what i'm saying like that but like i could really dance back in the day and so um that was kind of like my first taste of like seeing the industry and seeing something different and that that really um awakened something within me because you know coming from Akron and living in poverty like there was really nothing out there and a lot of people that live mm-hmm. in poverty they they only see what's in front of them and it takes them to be able to get outside of that bubble and see see stuff you know and and explore and when you explore you know naturally your brain fires off better like you know increases your critical thinking skills all that stuff is all Mm -hmm. part of like exploration and so um that's really what started and you know for me uh I wanted to find a way to get out of get out of you know my situation, and so okay. I, um, I started to kind of find more opportunities and avenues to to be creative and to and to uh, just find myself opportunities to to do something different. And I think music wise, I always had a different taste in like music, and um, I, I, I was just one of those kids that I, like everybody liked this, and I kind of like that. You mm-hmm. know? And, mm-hmm. That was, I didn't know how to name it or pinpoint it back then. I just knew it was just in me. I just didn't like what everybody else liked. I also like to figure things out on my own, you know? Yeah, and, and I think a lot of it, and what I'm, I'm trying to kind of get to here too, is that a lot of people so, put so much emphasis on, you know, just that whole, you know, testing and, you know, this, how you get ahead is like by having – um, you know, great grades, but it was sometimes the kids that just kind of did okay, but were could think differently and were that little bit of that weirdo, that those are the ones that kind of put things together to actually, you know, find some success or get out of the neighborhood or do things like that, you know, and I, I think that what your story just kind of talks directly to that. Um, Man, you know, it's funny, it's funny you bring it up, though, too, Catherine, because we were just talking about this earlier today. Um, oh. about the workforce yeah about the workforce and like you know we've the school system has really prepared people for standardization yes right we've taken out art classes we've taken mm-hmm. out things that teach us soft skills we've taken out trades in the schools we've taken out everything that really sparks something within kids and we've replaced it with standardized testing to check off boxes like, oh, do you know general math? Do you know general this, general that? Yes. It's okay to learn and understand general stuff, but how do I really know what speaks to my spirit if I don't have a way right. of exploring those different things? And everything, this is we're talking about this too, like everything that we interact with in the world has a creative element to it. Yep. Right? The 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 marker that I use, somebody had to design this, somebody mm-hmm. created came up with this and then they built yep. it. You know what I mean? This cup, like somebody created this, right? Like yep. we're surrounded by art in different ways. And it's like, how do we make sure that that stays in the in the places? Because now companies have to make up for what people didn't have in schools by exactly. creating supplemental programs to teach them soft skills and, and, and ex- exploration and getting their hands dirty and, and, and stuff like that. So. We're really, we really need to rethink how we're preparing our, our next generation for what's going to really be their, their passion and, their, and what's going to be their, their thing moving forward, you know? Yeah, and that's essentially what this podcast is about, is that I, I'm really trying to get value behind that whole creative side. Because, I mean, I, I think if anything, you know, uh, America, just in general, gets, has gotten really far ahead 
in innovation. You know, a lot of the stuff gets stolen and duplicated, but the ideas come here, come from here. And if we're only teaching standardized things, how are we inventing anything new? You know, how are we being creative? And again, like I said, the people that are the most successful um, or the most happy are the ones that are tapping into this both dual side thing. It's like, yeah, I can be super smart or sort of smart even, but if I have this out of the box thinking, if I you know trust my gut, if I have you know um, innovative ideas and use creativity, that with this is what makes it work. I, I know a lot of people that own businesses that are super super smart, but they have no idea how to market themselves or no idea how to you know write anything. And it's like you have got to you know exercise you know that right side too because it's going to work with that left side, and that's going to take you to the next level. Um, yeah. So to your point, exactly. The fact that they take that all out of schools and stuff is really, really heartbreaking because that's where the, that's where the next, next person comes from, you know, is, is those people that get to exercise the whole thing versus just getting this beat down with, you have to know, you know, a foreign language and you have to know, you know, history and science. And I mean, it's all, and I'm not going to say that's not valuable, but the, it's, it's it's an elimination of that other part that is is the part that I don't like Um, because we use it every day. (laughs) <laughs> it's right, worked right, for us. Right. right. Okay, so um, how are you utilizing that now in your business? Because, you know, you have this whole fashion thing that you've kind of kicked off that um, <laughs> right. I, it's, it's definitely tickling that right side of your brain. But uh, so let's talk yeah. a little bit about that and then talk about how all your creativity and your, and your, and your, your smarts are paying off at uh, Warhol and Wall Street. You know, um, it, it's, it's, it's uh, I love it. So I graduated, you know, I was blessed with the opportunity to go to Ohio State. And I graduated Ohio State with a major in psychology, minor in marketing. Right. And so I've always been curious about how people think and how people perceive things. Right. And uh, I think that's what that was the foundation for my curiosity around people and learning and being a kind of forever learner of like people and culture. And it's a so, great background for marketing too. I have to tell you just psychology in general. <laughs> you know, and, and what's funny is that what's funny is that I could not get a job in the marketing industry. You know, it was super hard because typically, you know, going through college, if I was a marketing major, if that was my major, I would have probably had more opportunities to get like internships and, and get in front of some of the, you know, the businesses and stuff like that. But since I wasn't a major in marketing, I, uh, the minor was just me taking the classes, right, to get that. And so when I graduated, I was going, like, knocking on doors of agencies, like, knocking on doors, like, hey, like, I know you don't know me. I just walked in, but I'm really passionate about marketing and strategy, and I, I really want a job. And I just kept getting the closed doors, like, boom, boom, boom. And, um, and that's kind of what led us to start our own thing because it was like, you know, when people want to bet on you, you got to bet on yourself sometimes, you know, yes. and, uh, and, I, and I had to take that leap and it took me some, some years to kind of, you know, to, to get the courage up to do that. But I had, uh, had other avenues to, to kind of, um, you know, lead that. But my point is, is that having that background in psychology, like really helped me out. Like mm-hmm. I always think about how, how, what we're conveying to our clients, you know, is it, is it really, how are they receiving it? How will their customer perceive it? What are things, whether it's visuals, like uh, one of my favorite classes was the psychology of perception. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know that thing existed. And it was like, it was a super dope class because it, it talked about how we perceive certain sounds, how certain sounds bring our mood down, how certain sounds yes. bring our mood up, yep. how certain colors make us think more, how certain colors make us think less. And so, like, I was fascinated by that class because it made so much sense to me, like, how blue pops off of, or how yellow pops off of blue more. It was like certain things were like, wow, I never picked up on these things. And so that class was one that got me really uh, passionate into how art and strategy come together. And I yes. think we apply that in a lot of things we do right now. When we say, okay, well, we're dealing with a client's project. We start thinking about those, like, foundational you know lessons and foundational like rules that we've learned through like things like psychology about how people receive messages and inputs 
and how that affects how they the, how they react to it, how they behave. And so we apply some of that knowledge to it, and then we're able to manipulate that through art. It's like, okay, now let's take that understanding that, let's use, let's use sound design. If we know that sound can engage people in this way, let's use sound design in this way that creates a whole different experience. You know what I'm saying? And so we often, with Warhol and Wall Street, we often play around with a lot of that. You know, we look at projection mapping and, and physical spaces and placemaking and those different types of things that, that help, you know, kind of set off different senses in people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. one of our favorite is people remember a lot of our events or a lot of our strategies as having some of those components that they may not have thought about, but we do because we always think about it from that perspective. So I would say that is uh, how a lot of that foundational learning kind of brought me to where I'm at now and how we kind of operate on a day to day. And then um, I just kind of fell into fashion. Like, and <laughs> I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. But uh, you know, when you have, you know, when you have um, something, there's a challenge or there's a problem to solve. And and you come across this problem and you know how your mind gets fixated on something and you're like I, I gotta I gotta I gotta figure this thing out it's just like I can't I can't sleep without trying to <laughs> figure out this thing that's how I came into fashion um we were on a create Columbus commission with the mayor's uh create Columbus commission and we were doing right. an exercise on how to reimagine Columbus and so it was like thinking about the pulse of the city and how we could make people aware of how cool Columbus was. And we're like, okay, let's reimagine Columbus as a tech city. What would it look like? How would it feel? What would the experience be? And then we said, okay, let's look at, you know, some other ways. And so, you know, uh, someone mentioned, you know, fashion and they mentioned that we were the third largest fashion capital. And so uh, when I heard that, I'm like, we are like, I I didn't know that, but that, that became that, uh, that problem that I couldn't get my mind off of was mm-hmm. like, are we, are we really like, I couldn't even believe it. I was like, are we really? <laughs> well, <that's> a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, everybody else dropped and they went home and I was going home. Like, no, wait a minute. Like, wait, 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 like for real, like, are we really that? We're like this cool ass city that nobody knows about. And we're yeah, like, and the just a little bit of, just a little bit of background to that too is, um, some people may or may not know that, you know, the limited brands are located here in Columbus. Um, so that includes like Victoria's Secret and uh, Express and all those sort of brands that were all Abercrombie. And the one plus side to that is like that brought a lot of people here, a lot of designers, a lot of very, very talented people. Um, and they ended up staying, which is really cool. So it's like, you know, the people are here um, that no yeah. fashion, you Don't know, know. Back- forwards but you know not everybody stayed not everybody stayed with the company but they're here so now what so yeah it, it's perfectly right to claim that title of third right. well, you know, you know the third thing about that I was, I was telling somebody that i was like man you know you could be in a bar or a restaurant sitting next to one of the smartest people in the in the world when it comes to fashion and wouldn't even know it like, we right. Know it. right. It was like, it blew my mind. It blew my mind. I was like, wow. But we are talent rich when it comes to the fashion industry. We have some of the world's biggest and brightest minds that live here. And like you said, they stay here because you could either spend that money in, in Columbus and live pretty good, <laughs> or you can spend that money in New York or LA and live like, you know, live like, exactly. know, live very, very, very humbly. Yeah. Off you of got a lot of extra money when it's not through the roof. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, so people did, like you said, they moved here and they're like, okay, my money goes way further. I could raise my family here. And a lot of them stay here. I actually was talking to uh, Michael Weiss, who is uh, one of the. Oh, yeah. I was talking about him today, too, that it's such a small world. (laughs) Yes. But for those who for those who don't know, right, Michael Weiss was one of the. Uh, OGs at Express, he really less brought them in and he took yes. Express from yes. like a yes. few stores to like over 600 stores globally. And, you know, he lives here in the city and, you know, he, I met him and we had talked a long time and he brought that up. He said, you know, one of the things I can brag about is that about 100% of the people that I hired to move to this city have all stayed in this city. And he said, yeah. that's because they knew their money could go a lot lo- longer and further uh, if they stayed in the city than moved back to LA and New York. So we're talent rich. 
We, we have such a long history of the fashion industry here. Yes. And to me, my, um, my personal fashion journey was that also growing up very poor, I had to be very clever with my fashion. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the thing you don't want. You don't ever want to get teased as a kid. Uh, oh, you yeah. Oh, you do. And I remember my mom would buy me like, man, my, they would do me so wrong. They would buy me. <laughs> 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 For real. We would go to the pantry or like Gold Circle and they would have like the little bins in the middle of the aisle and they'd be like some like some stonewashed flat shoes or something. I used to be so mad going to school with these outfits. And I used to tell myself, like, as soon as I get some money, I'm, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to go to the mall. I'm going to get all my the first thing stuff. I did when I got a job was to buy what I call real clothes, stuff that did not come from a garage sale or something that was on a hand-me-down. It's like, nope, right. this is my clothes. First time worn by me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, like, I started getting really, um, you know, just trying to be creative with my with my outfits and stuff like that. And then... A friend of mine was making clothes. This is in middle school. A friend of mine was making his own clothes in middle school. But, and again, at Akron, he didn't have these programs. So he was just learning from his aunt. And he would make clothes and just try to look different. But oh, I thought impressive. about that type of stuff. And I'm like, you know, if you ask, if you ask most kids from underserved communities, what are some of their favorite things? Fashion is top five, right? And then knowing that, knowing that mostly the young individuals from underserved communities are the ones that create the trends because of out of necessity they're they're rolling up their sleeves they're 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 reworking their shirts because they have to make it work that ends up being a trend and so what i thought about with this fashion piece was like understanding strategy and creativity i'm like columbus has this really really big opportunity to take this industry that's been here for decades, but kind of been in, in the shadows almost, as far mm-hmm, as like mm-hmm. the greater community knowing it and saying, if we could show these individuals how to get into this industry and, and break down some of the barriers, we can create a wave just like New York and LA you know, have. We could create our own Absolutely. ecosystem and world where we're birthing the next big Virgil Abloh, the next big, you know, Ralph Lauren. It's like, we have all the tools here. These people, like you said, they still stay here. They live here. They've retired here. They have wealth of knowledge. Yes. And we have no channel to pass it down. So to me, my creative brain just kept saying, fashion is, is creativity. Fashion is art, but it's also economic, you know, empowerment. It's also an economic, you know, driver. So yes. we literally could create a whole new economy by teaching the next generation how to do it like we did it. And, you know, and so I think that is our, I think from a homegrown perspective, while a lot of people are excited about Intel, they're excited about, you know, Amazon, we're looking at all these things and we're, re- we're thinking about how that's going to reshape our city. Mm-hmm. If we have some homegrown gems that if we polish those up and really invest into that, it could really help our city in a lot of ways, like from recognition and awareness, travel and tourism, economic empowerment, even looking at ways to reduce violence. If you give more people opportunity to learn how to fish and they're already into it, yeah. now you're, you know what I mean? You're, you're creating more impact in the neighborhood. So it has a lot of positive benefits. You know, like when you, uh, when you drink those drinks and they're like, yeah, this drink has vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. Right. And it's like <laughs> fashion is like that for Columbus. It has all the good Good things that we could, you know, get from it if we uh, just drink the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. So, uh, you know, with that, building on that, where would you like to see Columbus in, like, five or ten years when it comes to this whole fashion idea? I would like to see Columbus really embody the moniker fashion capital of the Midwest. I really see that we have the opportunity to lead the future in where fashion is going. Fashion is definitely going into a more e-commerce first, uh, you know, um, industry where I'm buying online and I am buying small bags. I'm buying unique pieces, one of few. So to me in five years, I see Columbus owning that industry. I see us building a whole workforce right here, bringing manufacturing back to the U S it's better happening here because we have the logistics hub. So where we compete, where LA and New York cannot compete with us is owning that that ecosystem of 
affordability to be able to produce and ship to the rest of the world. We're right in the middle of it. We have the most robust distribution yeah. hub in the country. So like as a third largest city, we could be that scrappy city. And I see us in five years saying, while New York and LA own the high fashion culture, mm-hmm. Columbus, Ohio owns the future of fashion. We're like the place where you go to start a grow a fashion based business. And then we are creating jobs out of that, whether it's sustainability, advanced manufacturing, production, but then also supporting the birth of new designers, venture capital. I see us having a whole new, you know, a whole new take on fashion and being recognized for it, unlike a New York or LA. So that's what my that's my vision and I, I see it I see people starting to see it too. So it's really, really exciting, honestly. I I see it too and I, I like I said like you said, you know, it's we have everything here. All the infrastructure if you will all the talent, yeah. and I think it's just going to take a little bit of belief in time, and you know we'll, we will be there. I mean, it's it's super yeah. exciting. I, I love your vision. I really, really do. I'm, 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 I'm I can't wait for it to all happen. And I, I think you know my and you know kind of in my last question too was like, well, how does that some of that creativity you know bleed into your business? But I think you've kind of illustrated that perfectly because you are clearly a very creative person. <laughs> you are clearly a very <laughs> smart guy. So you you are just out there getting it done. And you're just like the perfect person for people to hear about today. Um, so they could, they too could just say, you know what? I took dance classes back when I was a kid. How can I kind of get back to that, that feeling of, you know, but you know how you felt when you did it, you know? And it's, it's a lot different than if you are filling out your, your taxes properly. I mean, that's a good feeling too if everything balances, but it's not the same if you like totally you nailed know, anything. Right, dance right. Routine, you know? <laughs> Right, right. No, you know, I, I honestly, um, you know, I, I've been I've been very blessed, and um, like you said, that feeling is what I want to help other people get. So, like, my passion to give back is because I know for a lot of people that grow up, grew up like or are growing up like I grew up, it's uh, it's it's rare to have that feeling of 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 potential of confidence in yourself because. The world's telling you something different, and so like knowing that I uh, I was I was I mean I was I literally got into college because I had a I had um, children's services that uh, um, assigned a mentor to to our household, and this this lady named Cheryl I talk about her all the time. Cheryl worked at rallies, and she would come and pick me up on the weekends, and would just try to help me out with my situation, and so. She filled, She took me to the library and filled out my college application with me, and then she paid for my application because oh. I didn't have enough money. And without that, without that, I wouldn't have gotten to college. And so, That's like great. for me, knowing that a couple of people pouring into other people can change their trajectory, I, I want to do the same thing, you know. And so, I think about it from a scale perspective now, and I think. Now I have the confidence, and that's been a lifelong journey, right? I know you you know that what that is like to, to better yourself, to try to grow, you know, and to start to feel more confident in, in, in who you are and your potential and start to settle into that. And then yep. to start to, you know, start to look at it from a perspective of, I don't care what people think, I'm just going to go and I'm going to drive and I'm going to do it. You know, it takes time to kind of get there. But the fact is, and, and this is what I'll say for anybody that's watching this, is that you know, once you've found something, you know, you have purpose in your life and your purpose may change based on what you're called to do. I've been down many roads, many chapters, and most of us have. But when you do find that space and, and where you're where you're really, you know, that your energy, you could tell where your energy is drawn to, like, you know, take it, take it and run with it. And 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 uh, look at it as like the journey is much, much more important than the end result. And I think that's what I'm learning in life now is that my journey, I'm not looking at the, the end goal is like, I need to do this, but I'll look at it as like, get up every day and just leave it on the floor that day and just enjoy the journey as much as possible. Just knowing that I know what I want to accomplish and, and being there for that. And so, you know, uh, I look at all the things I've been blessed to have. I'm here for a reason, right? And this is not all done because of myself, it's done because of other people and and just the way the universe or the creator is guiding my steps and so you know um, i'm going to try to keep on leading and 
being able to, like you said, bridge the creativity with the strategy, you know, develop, develop the, you know, you got to always develop. You got to always work on yes, yourself. Yes, always be learning. Always be, yeah. Always be learning. Right, right, right. But uh, mix that raw talent with that development and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the yeah. ride. It, it, yeah, it really is magic, too. And to your point, too, um, I wanted to talk about this, too, is like, uh, you know, like when you're talking about, you know, people kind of coming up with new fashion and things like that. The beauty of that is, is if nobody's done it, that's when you start can, can cr create a trend, you know, too. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, people should still keep investing in their kids when they see this sort of talent. Don't just say, you know, you got to get your, get a real job, which <laughs> which I was told, you know, don't, you don't want to be an artist. <laughs> you'll, you'll be starving. Um, so, you know, I got into marketing, you know, <laughs> so, I could, so I could, you know, make some money that way. But, you know, not to discount that that wonder and that innovation and that creativity because it could be the next big thing. And that's how those things happen, you know, um, and, and how people yeah. kind of change the world. And I, I loved, you know, everything that you said, I think that is really, really spot on and inspirational to people. And you got to give yourself space to do that too. That's another thing is that, you know, like you said, we kind of are programmed to, you know, go to school, get a job, you know, pass these tests, go to college or go right into the workforce. And sometimes creativity needs space. And I've been learning that too. Some of yes. my best ideas have come from, I do road, I like to road trip a lot. So when I drive, I'll have my best ideas when I drive because I'll just have time and space where I'm not mm -hmm. distracted by a lot of stuff. And I think that's a key to it is like tapping into that creativity. You got, you got to give yourself space. So if you're trying to tap into that creative space and you're trying to like, you know, don't try to force it. Sometimes you just got to give yourself some space, man, and room to breathe and let those kind of creative ideas flow because you just have the capacity. You open up the capacity to just think freely, you know, so, yeah. And it, and it will change the game. I mean, people, again, yeah. you know, you got to think about, you know, you, you do have a to-do list. You have to get that done. But giving yourself mm -hmm. that, quote, unquote, free time, that can be the game changer that's going to change everything. So I, I love that yeah. bit of advice. That's how, I, that's how I came up with our name. I was on a road trip and I had that little space and it hit me. I was like, we're on Wall Street. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I could not be more thrilled to have you here today. This has been such a delight. And um, like I said, you're just an inspirational person and you're very fun. And I know you're going to get everything done that you plan to get done. So um, thank you again. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, and thank you for inviting me to this, too. If you got any more of these, like, invite me out. You know, I love the top of <laughs> we'll, we'll the follow-up. Yeah, we can do a follow-up. <laughs> or you and I will just start doing a podcast together. And we'll just keep talking yeah, about that. We should. We should. We should do it together. And I'm telling you, I, I got some big announcements coming up this year that um, are going to get people really, I mean, like, really excited. So, Catherine, I'm, I'm telling people here first, I got some big announcements coming this summer. Cool. And I'll come back and tell everybody yes, about it next time. Yes, right? you will. Thank you so, so much. Yeah.